stop. If your bike chain is dirty, it's slowing your bike down a lot more than you'd actually think. Well, that's what we're told. I'm gonna find out if that's actually true. And if so, how much slower a dirty chain is compared to a clean one. To do this, I've come to a lab in Denmark where they have some incredible equipment and engineers that can measure just that. But that's not all. We're gonna compare my dirty chain with a brand new one out of the packet and also a best case scenario waxed one as well so that we can see all of the differences. Let's go. To do this, we've come to Ceramic Speeds HQ in Denmark. Known for their fancy bearings and pulley wheel systems, Ceramic Speed also researches drivetrain efficiency on bikes, which as I will show you, is more complicated than you might imagine. I've also got a chain with me that's exceptionally dirty. So Cy previously rode this chain to do his FKT, uh, and then I've ridden it uh, across Denmark through sand dunes, through forests, through mud, through loads of dirt, uh, and I deliberately over-lubed it as well. So as a consequence, it's, um, well, it's covered in lots of lovely grinding paste and has had a truly terrible life. Helping us test the chains is Michael Pedersen, who is a development engineer at Ceramic Speed. Michael looks at all aspects of drivetrain efficiency and testing. He also investigates longevity and durability. Michael, thanks for, thanks for having us and helping us with this experiment. This is the machine that we're going to be testing the chains on. Yeah. What can it measure and how does it work? Well, it's uh, basically a full load watt. We call it the full load watt tester. Right. Uh, it's because it tests the entire drivetrain. So it tests the bottom bracket bearing, it tests the front chain ring and the chain the red railia, the pulley wheel uh, and the pulley wheel bearings and the cassette, everything is, is uh, tested on this machine in, in combination. So it can, it can isolate and measure the drivetrain efficiency of every element of the, of the drivetrain yeah. and see where you're losing. Yeah, where are the watt losses. Where the watt losses are. Yeah. So where does, just out, you know, just out of interest, in terms of all the, all the components of the drivetrain, how does the chain compare in terms of losses typically to the other bits? I'd say the chain is the biggest uh, source of loss. Right. Of watts. It has an incredibly amount of uh, links that, that needs to be articulated and every time the, the links are bent across the, the front chain ring and the pulley wheels and the cassette. It's friction. Yeah, 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 you get the losses there. So this machine, in simple terms, we're just measuring the losses. Yeah. But it's quite, it strikes me as quite complicated and probably a lot more complicated than people would imagine. So what are the big sort of challenges with this machine? There are some mechanical challenges. Everything has to be aligned up perfectly so they don't contribute to, to, to some kind of resistance. So the axis that go through everything, it has to be going through exactly uh, like it's supposed to. So these have to be placed incredibly precisely. Everything needs to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see somewhere we have put some, some black spots around so we can see if it has moved and this is the perfect place for this, uh, this part of the machine. So we, we spend a lot of time um, to get it completely aligned as it's supposed to be. Because if it's not, you can see what losses, just because it's not completely aligned. So in terms of the experiment we're doing, we've, we've got on here like a, a best case scenario. So the chain yeah. that's currently fitted here is uh, optimized and yeah. waxed. And yes. it's a SRAM flat top chain, yeah. the same that's on my bike. So what power are we gonna run this, run through the system? Oh, you mean the load? Or the load, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. 250, well, 250 watts. 250 well, we watts. Can, we, can, we can put whatever we want, maybe 300, but, but what we usually test is at 250. 250 is your standard testing. Yeah. If you increase the power, I, I'm guessing the loss, there's greater losses. If you, yeah. So if you, ride, if you ride at a higher power, it becomes more important. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, right. I, I guess we can start firing it up and yeah. seeing what the, what the best case scenario gives us. Yeah. So we've fired up our best case chain um, and it's running at 95 RPM and yeah. 250 watt load on there. Also, uh, an interesting detail is we've got the best chain line at the moment. So we're keeping it consistent between the chains uh, in the middle of the block on sprocket six. That is sprocket six, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Sprocket six. Uh, but Michael has told me that he thinks I'll be massively surprised and you guys will as well 
of how much more friction you can create in your drivetrain simply by changing the gear and, and being in different sprockets. So I think we're going to have a look at that later as well. So on the computer, we can see what's happening with a, with a graph that's forming in real time yeah. of, of uh, the, the, the drivetrain losses. And the interesting thing is, for our optimized chain, we can see that it's the power difference is about eight and a half watts. Uh, it's, there's a bit of fluctuation in it, but it's, it's about eight and a half watts. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty fascinating to see. The other thing we should point out is, is that this line is stable because this ch chain has been broken in. So with, with chains that have been waxed, what, what Michael typically sees is that they have a, a, a lot more losses to begin with as they break in and then they, the graph goes down and then it levels out. Yeah. I'd say about 15 minutes and most uh, wax uh, 15. chains. Yeah, we'll, we'll ha if you ride at 250 watts, it'll, it'll, it'll be basically close to where it would be uh, stable. What, and, and some of the endurance wax chains, they need longer. Really? Yeah, and they can take a long time to break in, maybe half an hour. Interesting question. How temperature dependent is that? Does it take a lot longer in colder temperatures? That's a good question. I mm. would I would think so, because the wax wax is not really good for really cold weather. Mm. It, it can start to flake and stuff like that. But I would I would assume so. Yeah. I I'm not entirely sure. But England is a, so. isn't the warmest place. No. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway. Yes, yeah, so you can see that eight and a half watts with that tram chain is what we expect to see if it's waxed and it's, uh, uh, what do you call it, broken in. Yeah. So, um, should well, we let, Let's see my horrible chain, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so just to reiterate, this, uh, this chain was ridden by Cy uh, on his FKT and, well, not, not properly cleaned afterwards. It was Cy, after all. Uh, and then I've ridden it across Denmark, um, including riding through a lot of sand and uh, on, on beaches, which uh, also contains a lot of salt. And there is, well, there does appear to be a little bit of rust on it as well. Brilliant. You can hear it. The sand in it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds horrible. Yeah, I'm guessing it's a bit higher in uh, watt loss. <laughs> but let's see, it hasn't applied the uh, load yet. It's coming now. Let's see where it starts. About nine. Nine? Yeah. But again, that's the whole drivetrain. Yeah. Just got one watt uh, worse. I mean, if you had been riding with the, you know, the cassette and everything, it would be even higher, of course, because of all the, the sand. The cassette's and, uh, dirty as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ah, that's, so, that's an interesting point. So, yeah. just the chain in isolation is about a watt, but then yeah. you reckon there'd be more losses from the yes, pulley yeah, wheels sure, and sure. everything on there. Yeah. Okay. Especially if it gets inside the bearings as well, the, the sand and water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's like, that is less than what I was expecting. Yes, me too. Hmm. Me so too. when you... But when, you, you don't hear the sand anymore. Yeah, it's sort of so, quieting down a little bit. Yeah. So when you've, because you've tested hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chains on really horrible chains, what is the difference that you see in your tests? Um, well, the thing what's is, what's the worst case? This is this is a new machine we've built. Uh, most of the tests we've done earlier was with that machine over there, mm -hmm. and then that can only measure 8.81 watts, and sometimes the chains have so much resistance that it, it we have a magnetic decoupling to to save the torque sensor if it's too high, really? and that decouples. So it's above 8.81 watts. So, so, and I, I would say a normal uh, Shimano chain that has wax is maybe three watts. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just, just to say that when we test with that machine over there, a, a chain, really good chain, is three watts with a wax coating. Right. Yeah. So I would expect more as well, but I think it's, um, I think it's mildly dirty inside the chains yeah. because you don't really hear the sand anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably been crushed and most yeah. of the sand is on the outside. Yeah. So this machine can also add dirt yeah. to a chain yes. as it goes. Yeah. Is that, do you reckon that's worth doing to this one, see what happens? We could try it, yeah, for yeah. sure. So we're going to first 
just apply water to the chain as it's going round, uh, which is to simulate, simulate riding in the rain. And, well, Michael thinks that that will uh, surprise us in terms of the, the losses that that creates. What we're then going to do is apply the, the rain and the sand in, together, and um, that will really abuse the chain. I'm intrigued now to see how much, how much slower it makes you. So this is basically simulating when Connor and I rode through Taiwan earlier in the year. And now I get to see what was happening to my drivetrain in real time. It's not bad at all, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yep, so with just the water alone, the wet loop on my chain is doing pretty well. Um, sort of like about 0.2 of a watt, but yeah. the water is slowing it down a bit. Yeah, yeah initially it was like half a watt, which is not bad at all. Yeah, not bad at all, actually. Yeah. I expected more, I must admit that. Yeah. So? Well, let's hit it with the sand. Yeah, let's do it. That as well. It should come now. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. So right now, this is going up and up, and it's reading about yeah. 12 watts. Cyclists putting out 250 watts. We're losing 12 watts of that just being consumed within the drivetrain. Yeah. If we fully optimise that, yeah. what could we bring that down to? Uh, do you mean all the bearings and uh, just the chain um, and just, the lubricant? Just the chain and the, and the lubricant. Maybe seven, yep. maybe six. I, I don't think six is realistic with all the bearings and everything, but, okay. but seven probably. Okay. So with the, the sand and the, the water being applied there, it's progressively getting worse and worse. Um, we got up to about 12 and a half watts, so that's, that, that's, that's quite a lot, um, but I mean, I'd love to know how bad it, it could get, but it's not just, you know, making you slower. I think the, the most important thing is that it's also destroying your components, which is going to cost you money. My dirty chain performed remarkably well, and I'd kind of hoped it would be worse. But if you're looking after your chain by cleaning it, drying it, and using a good quality lube or wax, I feel that this test shows you would really have to neglect your chain in order to get high drivetrain losses, which I guess is good news. So while we're on the subject of chains and chain wear, I, I saw this in Ceramic Speed HQ and I thought it was a, a really wonderful example to be able to show you to help explain about how chains wear. So these are industrial chains, much bigger than what you'd have on a bike um, for industrial applications. Um, and this was a, a sort of standard chain that was being used in industrial applications and it would last eight weeks. And when it wore, it, it would go like this. Um, so you can see that it's the same component parts as what you'd get on a bicycle chain, just much bigger. So you've got the side plates here, you've got the rollers, uh, and then you've got the pins in the middle. And then this chain actually would have bearings built into it as well because it's so much bigger than a, than a bicycle chain. Bicycle chains don't have bearings built into them because they're so small. Uh, but, but what Ceramic Speed was able to do was actually uh, improve the design of, of, of this chain and the bearings within it so that it would last far longer, 50 weeks up on eight weeks, which in an industrial application is, is a huge deal. But what it allows me to show you is what chain stretch is when, when we talk about chain stretch. So the chain isn't actually stretching, but when you measure your chain wear and it appears to be longer, it's because this is happening. So you've got, here you've got the, the links and the rollers and they're fixed when it's new, but once they've worn away and, and there's little gaps and there's tolerances uh, have, have decreased, you get that slip there, look, you see that play? And that play across all the links is what makes it appear that your chain is stretched. There you go. It's crazy when you see it scaled up on a, on a big chain. So we've now fitted a, a brand new uh, Jura Ace 12-speed chain on there. And this has just got the factory grease on. But the purpose of this is because Michael wants to show us what happens when you change gear. Because, as he was saying earlier, he thinks I'll be surprised at how much difference the gear you're in actually affects the, the, the friction in your drivetrain. So this has really surprised me. What we have is a, a brand new Jura-Ace chain on there. It's currently in the 11 tooth, which is the smallest sprocket on the cassette. And the friction that we're seeing in the system is about 14 and a half watts. 
which is a lot. So that's more friction, more losses in this system with a clean brand new chain than we saw with the dirty chain that was in covered in sand and water and all that horrible stuff when that was in the optimum chain line. I wouldn't have expected that, that chain line played a more important role than all that dirt. That has surprised me. Um, and Michael was saying that that's one of the amazing things about this machine is it's finally allowing them to properly study the effects of chain line. And the reason why that's so important is because the, the smaller sprockets are less efficient because the chain has to articulate through a, through a tighter angle. And so there's more friction in the chain and all the links of it, but also the chain line. So the fact that the chain has to sit at an angle also creates more friction within the chain. But I, I really want to see what happens now as we move through the cassette. So that's what Michael's going to do. We've now run the in, entire cassette. And again, the results have, have surprised me. So when it was in the smallest sprocket, it was over 14 watts. Yeah, a little bit over 14 watts, yeah. And then as it moved up the chain onto the progressively bigger sprockets, I thought the low point was going to be the middle of the chain because you've got optimum chain line there. And it did get progressively more efficient. But what I didn't expect was that it was actually going to continue to get more efficient, even as it went up the cassette onto the biggest sprockets. And, uh, well, the most, at its most efficient on the biggest sprocket, it was about seven watts. Yeah, the least watt. So it's like time. half yeah. the, the, the smallest sprocket. Yeah, exactly. The amazing thing about this is, it, well, it suggests that the, the sort of biggest, well, on a clean chain at least, yeah, the, yeah. The, the biggest determining factor in terms of the efficiency of it is not the chain line, but the size of the sprockets, which, um, yeah, big gears are more efficient than small gears. To recap, our dirty chain was about a watt slower than the waxed one. The out of the packet chain was similar in performance to the waxed one too, but we know from other testing that this performance doesn't last as the factory grease attracts dirt. For context, the single watt of inefficiency we experienced would be worth around four to five seconds in a 25 mile, 40 kilometer time trial. But remember, Michael explained it would likely be more with dirty jockey wheels and sprockets. The seven watt swing we saw in different size gears balloons out to 30 seconds slower in that same 25 mile time trial. And so you can see why pro cyclists are now using massive chain rings in time trials. So having a dirty chain, it does slow you down. It does make your bike less efficient than having a, a clean one or an optimized waxed one, but not as much as I thought. And the thing that makes, well, perhaps even more difference and a lot more difference than I thought is what gear you're in and the size of the sprockets that you're using, which has kind of blown my mind a bit. If you've got more questions about this, which I'm sure you do, because I do as well, um, then fire them down in the comments section because these are things which we can ask the engineers here in, in the future. And I'd, I'd love to, and I'd love to make some more videos about it. I hope you found this interesting and, uh, and informative. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you have. I'm gonna go now. Love you, bye, and thanks to Ceramic Speed.